bring in uh, Washington Congressman um, Adam Smith, member of the Armed Services Committee um, as well. Congressman, thanks for jumping on for us. Um, appreciate it. Give me your reaction to what we're hearing now coming out of the Middle East. Well, the base thing is overall a very dangerous situation, and uh, Ben was outlining a number of different ways this could go. And I think the truth is nobody knows exactly where it's going to go, because uh, both sides want to make sure that uh, they don't appear weak. Um, they want to make sure that they're responding. I think right now, that is most likely what Iran is doing, which is to say you just can't hit one of our you know, consulates in Syria, and we don't do anything. So they have to do something. I think that's the most likely outcome, but it could spiral. If one of their drones or, or missiles gets through and Israel feels like they have to respond. Uh, so it's a very, very dangerous situation. And hopefully this attack can be thwarted without any uh, significant damage. But then you know, really got to get, get into discussions about how we calm tensions and stop the spread of this conflict. I want to read for you, Congressman, a statement that we're getting in from um, the IRGC um, on state television, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, um, in light of these um, recent launches, um, saying, in response to crimes by the Zionist regime, IRGC aerospace has launched missiles and drones on specific locations in the occupied lands. What is the president, what are you hoping, I should say, Congressman, the president will take into account um, in how the United States defends Israel, backs um, Israel in whatever response they choose? Well, I think the biggest thing that has been ignored in this whole process is the threat that Israel faces. Look, I am, you know, I, I think Israel needs to do more to provide humanitarian assistance in, in Gaza. Certainly the president has said that. Um, but people need to understand that Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas are bent on the complete destruction of Israel. And they have the means to at least carry out the threat, if not to achieve the ultimate end. And Israel is trying to survive in that neighborhood. So I think the president is going to remind people that is the, the, the reason for our alliance with Israel. They are an ally, a democratic nation in the Mideast that faces a profound threat to their very existence. I mean, the people who are coming after them aren't saying, you know, don't attack us. They're saying you have no right to exist in the first place. So I think we need to remind people that this is, in fact, an existential threat to Israel. Now, we're going to work with them. We're going to work with other folks in the region to try to get to a calmer situation. But Iran and their proxies, their proxies in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, Hamas, in Yemen, their proxies are driving this conflict. And they must be deterred to get to the point where we can have a calm, more calm, peaceful situation. So I think the president needs to make sure people remember that. You know, that the, the images in Gaza, the reality in Gaza is horrific. Um, but the underlying cause of this is the threat from Iran and others to Israel's existence. And, you know, look, I'm not in love with the way Israel has responded to that in every conceivable way, particularly when it comes to the Palestinian people in the West Bank. But they face that threat and they're trying to live in that very, very dangerous environment. But, but Congressman, let, let me ask you this. Um, in the immediacy, right, if we just think about the last couple of events, and, and I'm talking specifically about the attack in Syria on the Iranian generals, what do you think the Prime Minister Netanyahu's objective was in going after them. Do you think it was well, to I draw Iran into this conflict? Because we know Iran was acting through its proxies in this conflict, through the Houthis, through Hezbollah. Um, however, Iran directly had not gotten drawn into this conflict. Do you think Netanyahu, to a certain extent, was baiting Iran into this conflict by going after the generals in Syria? No, I mean, and, and I don't agree with the decision, but I can tell you exactly what Prime Minister Netanyahu was trying to do. He was trying to get Iran to back off, to say that, you know, you have been providing missiles and weapons to Hezbollah and Hamas and threatening us through Syria forever. Um, there will be a price to pay if you continue to do that. Now, I happen to think that that's an overly simplistic calculation on the prime minister's part, and it's all part of this myth that, you know, they only respond to strength. So if you so show strength, they will absolutely back down. Well, sometimes, and sometimes they'll react because they think that you'll only respond to strength.
violence. It becomes an escalating problem. But Netanyahu is not trying to bait Iran into a war. It is his belief that by showing strength and making Iran pay a price for what they've already been doing, the proxies they have been supporting who threaten Israel, his belief was that that would get Iran to back down. That's a very dangerous game to play because you never know if the other mm. side is going to do that or if they're going to escalate. Um, but please understand, and Prime Minister Netanyahu, did, as far as I could tell, was not looking for a wider war. He was looking to stop Iran's efforts that they've been, been doing and escalating here in recent months. Congressman, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you.